Gabriela Montero is definitely strange, albeit in a most brilliantly fantastical way. She is a virtuoso pianist who tours the world as a soloist, giving recitals and playing with the best orchestras, but she has another not-so-hidden talent. Gabi is able to compose in real time. Now, some people may call it improvising, but it gets much stranger than that. She does not actually know how to improvise. She never learned improvising skills or techniques. She never studied complicated harmony books. She often takes a random theme from the public while talking to them during the performance, like a weirdo would. She then transforms these themes into mind-bending spontaneous compositions. Garby, you look absolutely ravishing. What have you been doing? What is your secret? I mean, it, you, you look, you <laughs> always looked gorgeous, but I think, is it the extra sleep that you're getting or how do you do it? Thank you, sweetheart. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I turned 50 this year, so it's quite a big number. And uh, I'm just trying to really enjoy time with the girls and with Sam and and you know to take walks in the forest i'm composing a lot so maybe this creative energy that i have that is relentless is is connecting me to some kind of vitality that that mm -hmm. i really needed and i really wanted basically it's family sex and creativity is that what you're saying <laughs> well uh, i wouldn't say that publicly but uh, let's say that i'm enjoying well, the now. little things in life and <laughs> the things in life that you know are pleasurable uh, amazing. Well, creativity, of course, is incredibly <laughs> pleasurable. But first of all, let's start this interview with your childhood. That this is what's mm -hmm. really fascinating for me. Because when did you start noticing you're a bit weird and different? Because you're not like a regular musician. Even from an early age, you could do incredible things on the piano without even knowing it, but improvising. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? Well, you know, I don't come from a musical family, so it wasn't a tradition at home to have any of the great uh, recordings or any piano music or even an instrument. So um, what happened was that my mom, incredibly, for my first Christmas, she went out in Caracas to buy Christmas gifts for the kids, uh, you know, the family kids. Caracas, and that's in uh, Venezuela, just for those people yes, who have no idea about geography. <laughs> That's where I was born. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so she saw this little piano, this little toy piano, and decided to buy it for my cousin, who's older than I am. She bought me a doll. It turns out that I never liked dolls. So when, when she brought this little piano to the house, my grandmother, who was uh, a very strong personality, she, she saw the piano and insisted that she give it to me for Christmas instead. But I was only seven months old. So my parents at first thought, well, what is a baby going to do with a little piano? But they, you know, they, they uh, let's say, wanted to please my grandmother, put the piano in my crib, and they noticed that from the very beginning, I would start to play by ear all the melodies that my mom would sing me to put me to sleep. So you started when you were national... seven months old. Is that that, that what was you're my to say? first contact with the instrument? And then I was playing all of these songs by ear, including the national anthem of Venezuela, which later became a tool for protest against what's happening in Venezuela in my adult life. And uh, and I was playing all of these songs, uh, you know, just just very naturally. So my relationship with the piano was always uh, something that came from from a very deep source of of intuitiveness, and uh, I don't know, just something that connected me to it. Amazing. Well, for those of you who don't know what incredible things Gabi mm -hmm. can do, she is a beautiful pianist, a beautiful human being. Thank you. Um, but at the same time, she doesn't actually improvise i mean she in a way she she creates compositions on the spot and it's not like you've studied harmony and and, and theory for a long time right because you you claim to be famously mm. dumb concerning actual <laughs> harmonic knowledge. I mean, that's what, it's your words. You, you say that. Is, I don't, is that a, I don't think anyone has quite put it like that, but well, okay. Well, <laughs> that's basically what I, I read between the lines. So, but mm -hmm. is that just a marketing ploy? Have you been reading Harmony no. books secretly uh, during the night? Or, or are you just no, a no, genius? No, no, no. 
I, look, I think music is just a language that I always understood and that always came very, I had access to in a very particular way. Uh, I never studied theory or harmony. I wouldn't be, really be able to use the terminology to analyze my own improvisation. So it's a language that for me goes beyond how you classify a style or how you analyze a score. It's, it's, it's really like talking. So when I compose, it's, it's very much along those lines. It's something that I, I feel very viscerally, whether it makes sense or it doesn't, whether I enjoy playing it or I don't, or I think others will. Well, it's, it's incredible because as well, you, even though you don't have the knowledge, you have the, the natural feeling for form and shape while you're mm. playing, which is incredible. I, I actually had the privilege of playing with you, um, mm -hmm. well, on several occasions, but, but one time we did a crazy improvised uh, performance in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in Geneva, I, I believe, for a wonderful charity yeah. of a common friend of ours. Um, and, yeah. and that was such a wild ride because y you just never know what is happening. You're like a wild horse, I would say. Yes, yes, and, and actually that my piano teacher uh, at the Royal Academy of Music when I studied there in London, Hamish Milne, who was a brilliant man and, and an incredible inspiration and brilliant pianist, that's exactly what he used to say of me. He used to say I was like a wild horse and I had to learn to tame that spirit. And I think it's that kind of um, very uh, profound and animalistic somehow relationship with music which gives this whole emotional um, let's say, um, connection to it, uh, is really what drives my creativity. And when I'm improvising with other people, and it's very, very few times that I've done it, uh, with you was one of the few times, I don't have a map. So the, I always say I don't have a musical GPS, so I, I can't follow a map. I have to go wherever my mind takes me. And uh, there is no formula, there is no architecture that's pre-established. <laughs> The fact is, though, that you have some type of brain anormality. Well, I don't think <laughs> your brain is... Uh, uh, I think all of us musicians' brains is a little bit... We're all weird. But the interesting thing is you, you actually went to a, a doctor specialist. Well, I'm married to someone who is uh, very, very... Um uh, he's a very creative uh, personality. He's also a wonderful singer. He's a wonderful musician. And after years of, of knowing that I really don't have the theoretical background, but improvisation has always been something that just is and happens, he, he and his very scientific you know, uh, curiosity wanted to know how it is that I improvise and it's always different and there are no templates. So he called Dr. Charles Lim, who is the leading neurologist, and he himself is a musician as well, at the John Hopkins Hospital in the U.S., and said, look, my wife is, is someone who does this, check her out, and uh, I'd, love, I'd love for you to look into her brain and to see how she does what she does, because I want a scientific explanation. So um, not the mystical or religious explanation, but he wanted to know the science. So. Um, Dr. Lim checked out, you know, my improvisations and my performances and immediately called him back and said, um, you have to bring her straight away as soon as you can. So to look into we flew your brain. over to about, 
Yeah, so we flew wow. over to Baltimore. And the deal was that he was going to have a team and they were going to give me, um, they were going to investigate my brain by creating an experiment, basically a study where they would see how my brain reacted when I played a written piece, a memorized, always the same one, and I chose a Bach Minwe, uh, a scale and also an improvisation. So they wanted to say to see how my, my brain um, behaved in <clears throat> these different uh, moments. So originally I was going to be in the MRI machine for 30 minutes. It turned out to be almost two hours they asked wow. me to be in there. So Dr. Lim said to me, basically, Gabby, when you play a written piece, mm -hmm. the, the usual parts of the brain that we see in a musician, of course, they go crazy and they light up, etc. But what we've never seen is when you improvise, um, a different part of your brain co-ops and, and takes over because it's a much more powerful part, which is the visual cortex. So what I call getting out of the way when I improvise means that all of those functions in my brain that are active when I play the repertoire basically almost become dormant. But that means you are basically playing music on the spot while using the part of the brain that is in charge of sight. With my eyes. And in fact, he asked me, Gabby, do you see something when you improvise? And I, I'm not kinesthetic. I don't, that's, I'm very emotional. Yes, but not kinesthetic. And Amazing. and he said, because you're, you're creating with your eyes and this uh, this is quite beautiful actually your works when you play them they are like incredible little gems but of course uh, you can really develop them as a composer as well and you did mm -hmm. you there's mm -hmm. several works uh, that you did for example you written a few concertos expatria exactly expatria <laughs> Then there's the Latin concerto. But now you've actually managed to find a really good way to compose all the time because you, you were having the difficulty of, of uh, mm -hmm. not really finding the right program or tool in order to compose. And mm. I think you've discovered yeah. something now that works for you. Um, thanks to, to someone that is actually kind of doing a little, uh, some of my copies to work in the US, he suggested that I try Note Flight. In note mm. flight, I'd never heard of it. It's a little bit more um, manageable to someone like me than, let's say, Sibelius or Logic or any of the other programs. I, I love Sibelius. I, I always try to encourage you to use Sibelius, but you always I know, I know. it was difficult for you to get into it. Right? I think that's that's the next step, you know. But you have to start, uh, you know, in a more simple format, and that's really what note flight has, has opened up the possibility of me to, you know, sit down at eleven o'clock at, at night and I and I develop an idea, and it's it's wonderful. Are you endorsed by Note Flight <clears throat> yet? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. I, I oh don't, um, wow! I think I maybe don't think this about is, those things too much. Oh well, maybe you should. I think Note Note Flight would be very, very lucky um, to to have you <laughs> endorsing. Them. Well, let's see. Maybe we can reach out to them. So in case uh, in case mm -hmm. they they agree to do it, then you can find the link below of Not Note Flight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think it's it's interesting. Actually, I would love to check that program out myself as well. Even though I do love using Sibelius. It's um, very user friendly. Well, since we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, you are just as mm. as the rest of us. So um, yeah. I thought it could be a good idea to plug some of the concerts that you are not going to be doing. So, you oh, know, what, what 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 are you not going to be playing soon? Because, <clears throat> you know, everybody always shows off, oh, I'm playing this and this. I think at the moment nobody's doing anything. So where are you not touring? I'm so excited. 
Uh, well, I was supposed to be playing a recital at Carnegie Hall just in a few days. So why don't we just 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 do it this way? So uh -huh. please, in a few days' time, please do not go to Gabi's Carnegie Hall <laughs> recital because it won't yes. happen. It's going to be one of the greatest recitals that is not going to happen in the near near future. You're so humble. You even use your Grammy to prop up your books in the background, right? <laughs> is, is that is that your Grammy in the background? That is just my Latin Grammy for, yeah. for Expatria. Yeah, and why, not, the, why not just Carlos prop, Miguel prop up, in the way. Yeah, prop up the books uh, with the Latin Grammy. With my uh, platform, Music Traveler, where you are mm -hmm. an ambassador, I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, basically, the platform where you can book rooms in order to rehearse or practice or mm. even perform in. Um, basically, mm. we've started a new streaming possibility, a new streaming platform, which is very exciting. I'm also very excited to tell you here. Uh, we're just launching mm -hmm. it now. We're doing the final tests, but basically one can already start mm -hmm. trying it out. And it's very, very simple. I think it's the simplest, I would claim it's the simplest streaming platform out there because you simply add your URL from a YouTube, which you upload. You just upload something on YouTube, right. make it right. unlisted, mm -hmm. add a URL to your profile, mm -hmm. add a little description. Post it, say whatever, five euros, one euro, 20 euros, whatever one wants for the stream, depending of course what it yeah. is, if it's a five minute, a half an yeah. hour, a one hour thing. And mm -hmm. musicians can start getting some revenue from performances mm -hmm. now, from digital mm -hmm. performances now. Also in Music Traveler, we have um, over 500,000 uh, followers on Facebook. Mm. So we will wow. also promote those streams especially yeah, yeah, yeah. those yeah. streams of wonderful <clears throat> musicians like 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 yours uh, but yeah. everybody streams uh, there and we hope to facilitate and help musicians uh, with this mm -hmm. also we're not going to take any money from the musicians uh, at this mm. at this point that means all the That's revenue great. goes directly to the musicians we're all feeling you know if if we live from performing and if we live from 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 music and and sharing music with our audiences of course there are a lot of people who are suffering a lot and in, in these months of of silence and and i i think it's wonderful to create these opportunities to um you know to to help them of, of course absolutely of course. it's a perfect segue to actually now twist your arm and make you play something and improvise something so i'm going to get my violin right now and uh, you get ready we'll use a different camera angle um for that and then you will be mm -hmm. improvising i will give you one minute and one minute only to improvise on a theme given by me and me alone <laughs> either <laughs> film music or game mm. music now, how is your knowledge mm -hmm. of game music? Nil. Nil. No, Excellent. Nothing. Well, that's why I yes. will use my violin to play you those things. Okay. It's going to be very, very okay. exciting. Are you ready? All right. Let, uh, well, first of all, you, you, why don't you guess what which movie they're from? Oh, God, so. no. I'm really bad at that. <laughs> really bad at there that. There we go. That's it. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, of course, of course, very well. What what is it? Well, of course it's Star Wars. I mean, but then I'm not ah. gonna guess any of the other ones. This, this one is very so good. iconic. Okay, so it's a pretty kind of excellent. Okay, so are you ready for this? I'm gonna give you one minute and I'm gonna show you yeah. on the counter. Ready, steady, and go.
Wow! <laughs> perfect! Perfect timing! Wow! Amazing! I don't know what that was. I wow. would do something totally different. Even our team is... Uh, yeah, they're very impressed. Everybody no is clapping here. You can't see them. They're invisible people, but uh, they are very, very impressed. Okay, so let's see how you're doing with the next one. I think the time in one minute is perfect for the moment. Okay, let's, no. let's carry on doing one minute. So let's see if you know this one. Yes. Do you remember which movie that's from? No. It's uh, from Inception, actually. Oh. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. Which I was very, very lucky to see, um, actually, myself at uh, at a very early stage with uh, with Hans uh, at the director's uh, own home, actually. Wow. Christopher Nolan's home. Very cool. So. I think that's it, no? Um. Yeah. Harmonies are slightly different, but who's counting? Anyway, ready, steady, and go. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so we're going to do another movie of, of, of Hans's, actually, one more. Uh -huh. um, that's actually a movie um, he did. Uh, you, you, you may not know it because it may be not in your age range. Uh, it's called Boss Baby. Oh, when is that from? Um, that's actually very, well, just a, a few years ago. But uh, what's interesting is he's working on Boss Baby 2 right now, Boss Baby Part 2 very at the cool. moment. Very so cool. I know that because I can, not, I can neither deny or confirm that I'm, I'm recording some <laughs> stuff on that movie. So it's too early to say, but it's coming out very soon in a couple of months. Uh, so that's quite exciting. And I love the theme to it. It's really gorgeous. It's um, lovely. Have a listen. Very cute. Am I making it up or no? Yeah, that's no, that's good. Uh, and then? Wait. Things. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, change it. Hans won't mind. He won't give a shit. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. I he, guess he loves people something around with like his music. That. Okay. 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 You got one minute. Okay. And.
Lovely, Three yeah. Perfect, you made it under the time, which gives you another bonus Thank 23 points. Thank you, do I get a prize? Points. Do I win a prize? You get 23 points. Okay, very The good. points are pointless. Gabi, this was absolutely incredible. It's extraordinary. It's I love, love, love seeing you. It's been so such a pleasure to 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 see your face. Thank it's you. been okay yeah, to talk to you too. It's been, <laughs> uh, of course, to hear your music is. I'll take that as a compliment. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, your your music yeah. is extraordinary. No, I lo I love hearing you, you speaking too. to you. Everything, um, and the, as a last thing, are there any words of wisdom? Anything really? special and important to you that you would like to tell the people out there? Um, well, actually... If you subscribe to my channel, I will give you 100,000 kisses.